You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. This is Drake Wing Gaming, and some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Fueled by Insanity, Tracy's Path. So y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server, and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. One of which is already up now. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm Chan, you were up. And let's go. Alright. But these people barely know me. I've known Ted less than a week. I've barely talked to Tracy, and I've never known her boss until now. Does it really matter what they think of me? Or better yet, do they even know enough to understand why I'm bad? I can just omit certain parts and it should be fine. Right? I take in a deep breath and prepare myself. So, one of my friends told me and another friend about a place he wanted to explore. I wasn't sure at first, but I let myself get talked into going with them. Parker's the one who had doubts, not me. We didn't tell anyone where we were going. We wanted to keep it a secret and surprise them with stories of what we found. Anyways, we got to the place. Hold up a sec. What do you mean by place? My train of thought is lost from Tracy cutting me off. Huh? Are you talking about a building? A forest? You're being super vague here. Um, a, a cavern. A cavern? Huh. Yeah, we had never been to one, so... Again, I get cut off. Where is it? Shh, the, let the kid talk. Kid? I'm 23, you dick. My apologies, mister. C continue. Anyway, when we went in, we found a, a stone rock thingy. It was glowing. Caleb touched it. I told him not to. It disappeared, and then his eyes went red. They were glowing, too. So, glowing red eyes caused by an object in a cavern? Got it. What happened next? I don't know. I went home, and then I went to see Parker the next day. He was dead. Is Parker the name of one of your friends? Yes. There was blood everywhere. I couldn't look at red and white together for a long time afterwards. Right. If I had to guess it from your description, it sounds like he's under a possession curse. Possession? You mean, like, being controlled by someone? I nearly jumped when Ted speaks. I forgot he was here. Nah, the name is dumb, cuz. That's not what it is at all. Huh? How do I put it? Ever seen a zombie movie? Yeah, why? It's like that. No, he's alive. He's not a zombie. That's not what I mean, dummy. Zombies attack people to eat their brains because that's what they do. They aren't being controlled by anyone. That's basically what a possession curse is. Whoever named it just didn't know how the fuck it worked. Ted shudders when she explains it that way. So it's like rabies, then. What's rabies? You don't... You know what? Never mind. So, Jeffrey's friend is cursed. Is there anything we can do? <laughs> they don't have rabies in this world? What? <laughs> Interesting. Maybe. Tracy now turns to me. First, I need to know about this cavern. Do you remember where it is? Somewhere nearby, maybe. Um, k kinda? It's north of Shepherd, right off of Tonya Freeway. So it is real. You think it's the same place you were looking for? I'm 99% positive. And what's special about this cave, may I ask? Didn't I tell you already? No, ma'am, you did not. I'm pretty sure I did. I would remember if you had, would I not? Are you feeling okay? I told you two days ago. You got all excited and said you wanted to go on an adventure. Damn it, Tracy. I set you up for a cool moment. You blew it. You are meant to reveal a secret that only you knew. A secret hidden so well that not even your boss was aware of. But you just had to do things the boring way. Are you really doing this right now? Oh, it butcher your language. Don't make me ruin the surprise myself, Missy. What's going on? Oh, this is normal. Uh, but anyway, if everything Jeffrey said is real, then we have a solution. We're going on a mission. His sudden smile worries me. Makes me think he's got some sort of poorly thought out plan that's only going, up, going to go up in flames. I thought you said this was mine to reveal. You took too long. Fuck you. Language? Anyway, yeah, that's the plan. We're going to the cave? That is correct. What? Why do you need to go there? That place is horrible. Because we're going to save your friend. How? So this is this thing I found in my research. I don't know for certain if it really works, but... There are a few places in the world where a particularly special element has been discovered. I'm positive we can use it to help your friend. <laughs> Second now, water time. Ugh. How does that work? How do you use an element? You'll see once we get it. It's a powder. 
You sprinkle it on and then poof, and any and all enchantments and magical properties are instantly wiped out. Any and all? Blake? Y yes, oh. Blake? Yes, Miss Tracy? Stop ruining everything. Well, my apologies. You're not sorry at all. As scared as I was earlier, their constant bickering has actually helped me- has actually helped taking my mind off Kaijoro, at least for now. So, uh, when are we going, then? Right now. Tracy shakes her head. Chill, we're going in the morning. People need sleep. Oh, fine. Morning. You two are welcome to stay the night here. I've got an air mattress I can bring out. Yeah, get some rest. You'll need it. Oh, okay. That works. Uh, sure. I open my eyes and find myself outside on a city street, one that's surprisingly empty for this time of day. A chill blows through the air and causes me to shiver. I begin to walk along the sidewalk, hoping to spot any sort of landmark I recognize to get my bearings. That doesn't happen, however. Nothing is familiar at all. I can't even find a single street sign to determine where I am. In fact, none of the signs around here are readable, not even simple stop signs. The only, thi the only things on them are a few splotches of nons and nonsense, which can only mean one thing. I'm dreaming. The chilly wind nipping at my ears feels real. Each step I take is accompanied by the distinct, audible sound of shoes against concrete. If my dream is as realistic as this, then that should mean... Hello, Colin. The freeze, the free, I freeze the second I hear the sound of his voice right behind me. I turn around and face the smug-looking Kitsune. I already refused his offer, so what reason could he have to be here other than to torment me? Enthralled by my presence, I presume. My eyes are wide, my heart is pounding, my mind is racing a mile a minute. This is going to be a repeat of last night, isn't it? Leave me alone. I take a step back, yet unlike last time, he does not match my movement. Calm now. There's no need to be afraid. There's every need to be afraid. You hurt me. Dramatic as always, aren't you? I simply did, I simply did what was required to open your eyes to what's real. It worked, did it not? Because of me, you've finally taken this matter seriously. You're no longer standing idle as the world crashes against you. Crashes around, around, crashes, the world crashes around you. Despite no apparent deadline, you are now taking action. It's only a shame you pushed me into playing the bad guy before you would start. How do you even know what I've been doing? I've known you for longer than you realize, and I know you. And I know how you work. It's a shame you did not take me on as an ally, Colin. I'm quite reasonable once you get to know me. How was I supposed to see you as an ally when you drowned me? When you hurt me in real life? I've already answered you. I resorted to what was required. It's what you forced me to do. Despite you refusing my help, I still want you to succeed. I desire for your friend's curse to end. I'd prefer we do things my way so that both of us may benefit. Unfortunately, you've already made your stance clear, and so I have no further intention of fighting a feudal battle. Then, why are you here? What do you want from me? For now, companionship. That is all. I may know you, but you barely know me. I wish to change this. I'm aware I have not made a good impression. I am passionate about helping those in need. And I have accepted the reality that I shall never receive that same assistance in return. Though it's very slight, I'm able to sense his confidence waver a bit. I feel as if I've somehow done something wrong. I don't know why I feel that way, but I, but I do, so I speak. Is something wrong? I am conflicted. Conflicted? About what? Second y'all, water time. I await Kajuro's answer, but it never comes. Come, follow me. Kajuro leads the way inside one of the buildings. With nothing else to do, I follow. When I walk in, I find myself somewhere familiar. It's been a while since you've been here, hasn't it? Your friends and you threw your brother a graduation party here, didn't you? How do you know that? How many times must I repeat myself? I know more about you than you realize. Now, how about we take a seat? Kajiro makes himself comfortable at one of the booths, so I follow his lead. The familiar atmosphere has a calming effect on me, even despite Kajiro sitting just across from me. Care for a burger? Huh? I look down at the table to find a tray for each of us, both with a burger and fries. Kazuro picks up his burger and takes a bite. Hmm, not bad. Despite not feeling hungry, I decide to pick one up and take a bite as well. Sure enough, as expected, I'm able to taste the grilled beef and melted cheese as if it was real. So, let me ask you something. With my mouth full, I tilt my head to signal my curiosity. This mission you plan to go on, the one into the cavern, are you positive that's the, that it's the right move? I swallow the bite I had, then glare at him. He's trying to make me doubt Tracy and her boss. I don't see you coming up with anything better. Oh, I do have something better, rest assured, but that offer is no longer. 
despite my clear annoyance with him, Kaijiro simply grabs a couple fries and pops them into his mouth, looking completely relaxed. Then what are you trying to tell me? That you should be careful. You're just trying to get me to doubt their plan, too. Plan to, I don't know, make me chicken out or something like that. Kajiro shakes his head before taking yet another fry. You must you always mistrust me so. Kajiro gestures to my burger. Eat. You don't want this food to go to waste now, do you? It's not even real. Such a pessimistic outlook. I'm aware I cannot prevent you from taking actions you see fit. You can rest easy about that. What I am doing is instructing you to exercise caution in the cavern itself. What's there to be careful of? Kajiro seems to smile a little at my question, as if he's enjoying my confusion. I'm sure you noticed it when you ventured into it before. You sensed something was wrong before you even set foot inside. Something that made you want to turn back. I... That is true. If it wasn't for Caleb insisting on us exploring, I would have left. What you felt was a warding spell, though its effects have diminished significantly throughout the years. Such amateur work. What does that mean? Amateur means someone who has no idea what... I cut Kajuro off. Not that. I meant about the warding that... This time, he's the one to cut me off. I'm aware of what your question was. Then you can answer... Can, can you answer it instead of being so frustrating all the time? I can't help it. You're entertaining to observe. That wording. Does he think I'm just a toy for him to mess with? Dick. I say the word without thinking, but it appears to go by unnoticed. Somebody did not want the cat that cavern explored. That feeling you had was intentional. It's meant to drive away anyone who may consider entering. Okay, but that doesn't explain why you said I need to be cautious. There are there is a lot of magic there, but then there's a lot more magic there than a flimsy warning spell, as I'm sure you're already aware. Your friends and you made it out that day, if you were extremely lucky. Lucky? How can he consider any part of what happened lucky? I shake my head and glare at the relaxed Kitsune as he pops another fry into his mouth. Tell me, do you believe you were the only group to have entered that cave? Huh? The answer is no, right? Because someone had to go there to put magic in it, right? True, but I mean apart from that. Were we not? Think of it like this. The warding spell would have been enough to deter Parker and possibly even yourself, but not all of you were affected equally. Perhaps Caleb was more brave than the two of you, or perhaps the spell didn't have as strong as an effect on him. Amateur magic, as I've said. It is safe to assume there are others who have found the entrance, but were turned away by the same presence you felt. Correct? One second, y'all. Okay. Yeah. I think I know where he's going with this. It should, in theory, make sense that there are others who did who did enter. How many do you think made it out? I shudder as he says that. So if you come, so if you came across that glowy rock, then that means maybe other people came across other things. Because you're all nods. What I can inform you of is that there are many, many cruel traps said to keep intruders out. So when I tell you to exercise caution, I do mean it in the most literal of senses. Keep your eyes out. Ow! I immediately woken up as a pain in my tail gets crushed underneath someone's foot. In response, to, in response to me shouting, they get off of my tail, but wind up falling right beside me and onto... Ah! <sighs> Sorry, y'all. Tired. Ted gets, woken, Ted gets awoken just like I was. In only a few moments, a tired-looking chinchilla pulls himself up off, off of Ted and brushes himself off. Ugh. Whose idea was it to... S Whose idea was it to set up the air mattress in the middle of the room? One, it was yours. Two, are you guys all right? They'll be fine. Let's go over the plan. You could try apologizing, Pipsqueak. Ted pulls himself off the mattress and gives Blake a dirty look. I think it's the first time I've ever seen Ted in a bad mood. Then again, he did just get awakened by Blake falling onto him. He kind of has a point. I continue lying on my back, not ready to get up just yet. I st I'm still recovering from the shock of being woken up so rudely in the middle of such a, a serious conversation. Blake ignores Ted's comment and carries on. First things first, we're going to this cave of yours. I think you mean we're getting breakfast first. I brought the I brought donuts and coffee. Oh, one second, y'all. Uh, what is this in my eye? It's a hair. I brought donuts and coffee. That should that should suffice. That's not a meal. If we're going exploring, we need some actual food. Nonsense. If I know you two would agree with me. Blake looks at Ted and then to me, expecting us to back him up. I decide to finally sit up before giving an answer. Coffee's gross. You don't drink coffee? How in the world do you wake up in the morning? By getting my tail stepped on. Tracy snickers at my comment. Blake now turns to Ted, hoping for a different answer out of him. How about you? I'm not much of a donut person. Blake's jaw drops at Ted's revelation. Both Blake and I are equally in shock. How? Who doesn't like donuts? What kind of freak are you? 
I just don't like them much. Is that weird? Yes, everyone likes donuts. Oh, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.